Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a neoclassical gem of American music. Now, I know most of you just love neoclassical gems of American music, and what I am talking about is the Second Symphony by Robert Kirka. Now, who, you might ask, was Robert Kirka? Well, he's best known for his opera, The Good Soldier Schweik, which you know was recorded by Sidi a few years ago to great acclaim, a wonderful piece that's sort of like Court Vile, you know, Court Vile's Broadway scores. You know, it's a little bitter, a bit ironic. It's just terrific. But Kirka was a self-taught composer, mostly self-taught. He studied with Darius Mio briefly and some other well-known people, but basically he was self-taught. He was born in 1921 and he died in 1957. He was only 35 years old. He had leukemia, unfortunately, but he was tremendously talented. And along the way, um, in his brief span, he was no Mozart. You don't get to 626 Kerschel numbers with Robert Kirka, but you do have a, a passel of orchestral works and some concertos and some works for chamber orchestra, along with five string quartets, you know, six violin sonatas, uh, the opera that I just mentioned. There's a good, serious body of music, and it is terrific music for the most part. At least, at least everything that I've heard has been infinitely enjoyable and playable. And the piece that I really want to talk about is his second symphony, which was composed in the 1950s. And it, I just think it's a knockout. It's absolutely a knockout. And it's been recorded twice, both marvelously, really. So the one that you get depends on couplings and what else you want with it, because it only has three movements and it lasts about 20 minutes. It is, and listen to this, folks, any of you who, who do programming or may you know, know a symphony orchestra, this is the perfect, and I mean perfect, first half symphony. 20 minutes long. You could stuff a concerto after it. You could do an overture before it. You could have a big, major, flashy work on the second half. It's just ideal for that purpose. And, you know, one of the one of the hallmarks of great music, of a composer who has, you know, something really distinctive to say with the orchestra is that his his sound isn't like anyone else's. And Kirka is like that in this symphony. I mean, for, for, for one thing, it has a somewhat soloistic, almost virtuosic timpani part. The handling of percussion is very, very personal. The handling of woodwind writing, the, the, the differentiation between woodwinds and strings, the textural layering, it all sounds entirely fresh. It may not be. I mean, in real life, who the heck knows? It may not be. I think, I like to think of him in some ways as kind of an American version of Albert Roussel. You know, his music is is concise and and well-shaped and and poised and finished, highly finished and rhythmic and muscular. And it just, if to me, it has a similar quality, even though it's not quite as as rhythmically spiky as, as Roussel is routinely in his quicker movements. I think Kirka had more of a, a lyrical element, which I'm going to play you some of, because I, have, I can play you samples. And we're going to enjoy a couple of samples. We're going to compare two different versions of the finale, which I personally think is one of the greatest six and a half minutes in American music. It is absolutely fabulous. And it sounds like nothing else you have ever heard. Trust me. So let's talk about the recordings and then we can sort of go on from there. There are two recordings. One is on Albany and the other is on CD and they're quite different. In fact, I really think you need to get both of them because the Albany disc is a collection by different composers and the CD is an all Kirka disc. And if you like the symphony, you're really, really going to want the all Kirka disc. I mean, I play it all the time. It's just, it's just fantastic. Anyway, let's start with the Albany disc because it's the one that has the mixture of things. You get, here it is, the Albany Symphony, conducted by David Allen Miller on Albany. This is just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful music. You get the Festival Overture by Nikolai Lopatnikov. Now, this is 
basically like 10 minutes of festivalness. Now, you know what festival overtures sound like. If you know like William Schumann or one of those festival overtures, not the most tuneful piece in the world, but it's noisy and bustly and, and ebullient and full of energy. And it sort of muscles along for 10 minutes and it holds your interest the whole time. It's quite splendid. Next, we have Robert Helps. Robert Helps, who was a fascinating, fascinating composer, his his piano concerto number two, which is less than 14 minutes long, right? which is fascinating. It's just in a single movement, wonderfully played by Alan Feinberg, who does, remember, he made some great, great discs of contemporary American music for Virgin. He's, he's a wonderful pianist. And the, the piano concerto, it's it's basically it's sort of an eight freely atonal idiom. I, in my original review of this, I said it sounded kind of like late Scriabin, to me anyway. I mean, in some respects, but it's it has some very very distinctive motivic ideas. You can follow it easily enough. It has a vaguely soft, unsatisfying ending, which I think was intentional. And the writing for piano helps was a spectacular spectacular piano composer. And the writing for the keyboard is is extremely beautiful. You know, there's some, Chopin was one of them, and Helps was like that. I mean, it doesn't sound anything like Chopin, but it, his music is piano music. You know what I mean? It really fits the keyboard, and, and it, that makes the piece extremely enjoyable to listen to, you know, irrespective of the harmonic acerbity. You know, when, when instruments are really doing what they're meant to do, there's a certain satisfaction that you just grasp right away. Then the other work on this disc, and I'm gonna play you a little tiny bit of it, is Virgil Thompson's complete ballet, Filling Station. It's the Filling Station, yes. It's one of those typically Virgil Thompson, rural America sort of sort of folksy type things uh, with a, a, it's about a gas station and it's got a family there and it's gas, gas there's a robbery and, and it's just a bunch of little tiny vignettes all based on the same tune that sounds an awful lot like For He's a Jolly Good Fellow. You know, For He's a Jolly Good Fellow, For He's a Jolly Good Fellow, which is all actually a, a you know, tune from the 18th century that I think is one of the ones in Beethoven's Wellington's Victory or something like that, the French one. I think it is. Anyway, it's it's a delightful little ballet, and, and I'm going to play you a few seconds just for fun of the, the dance of family life is what it's called. You know, then there's the trooper and the robbers and the hobos and the stuff. It's, it's, it's all just delightful bit of Americana. And so have a listen to the dance of family life from Virgil Thompson's Filling Station. It's a charmer, isn't it? Anyway, it's a great little piece. It's all a whole ballet is like 20 some odd minutes long in a bunch of little 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 bits. And then we get to Kirka's second symphony. And I'm gonna play a bit of the finale because I really, I, I just love this finale. I don't know what to tell you. There's something about it that just, that just hits me. Just the style of writing and the way he handles the instruments sounds just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So here it is, Kirka's Second Symphony, the finale. I mean, the first time I heard that, I went away humming it. I mean, that big tune. Da 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 da
It gets in your head. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. All of which makes it even more wonderful that you can get on CD an entire Corka CD with the Grant Park Orchestra under Carlos Calmar. Now, this performance of the Second Symphony is every bit as good as the one on Albany. Um, and in some ways, it's a little bit different. It's not quite as bony. It's not as, as, as uh, you know, angular and and uh, as pushy when it comes to, for example, the prominence of the timpani. But but otherwise, it gives his Kirka's you know inherent lyricism a little more a little more room to blossom. I think in terms of texture, not so much in terms of tempo. They're almost identical. A little bit slower in the first movement, but you know these are very minor differences. And the work is such that, like I said, you're going to want to hear more than one version of it because it's just such a rewarding piece of music. But aside from the second symphony, what you get on this disc is his symphonic epilogue after Shakespeare called Julius Caesar, which is just terrific. I mean, it's full of memorable, memorable ideas. And it's quite brief. It's nine minutes long and it's just terrific. Then you get the second symphony and then you get a work called Music for Orchestra, which is a 13 minute very sort of Hindemithy, although again, it doesn't really sound like Hindemith. It's it's an it's an angular, darker work than the symphony, but very approachable still, and it, it just has that sort of abstract quality. You know, all, all those all those pieces called things like music for orchestra. You know, from that period. You know, these sort of neoclassical. They weren't symphonies. They weren't, but they were still abstract. They were abstract works that were, were just what they were musically. And, and I love that stuff. I mean, I really do. I think if you, if you don't have something to call it that's like obviously literary or based on something, don't give it some pretentious name. I mean, there's just these ridiculous pretentious pieces. You know, they're called things like, you know, you know, Euphonia 12 and Cosmos you know, 17, it's usually a, a name and a number or, or, or something like, something like, you know, hypnoxia or, you know, some sort of strange Greek Latin thing. And you have no idea what it is, you know, something, you know, chlamydia. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's enough to make you crazy. You know, these composers, the most interesting thing about their music is the name. Then you hear the music and it's like, ah, it doesn't sound anything like chlamydia. Well, there you go. Why call it that? So, so uh, this is a smart piece because it's just called Music for Orchestra and that's what it is. It's enjoyable and intelligently written Music for Orchestra. And then finally we get the Serenade for Small Orchestra. Now all of these works were composed in the, in the 40s and 50s. The Serenade for Small Orchestra is actually larger than the symphony because it has four movements. And I want to play you just a bit of the first movement because it, it, it has this, this marvelous marvelous bittersweet lyricism that you find in, in most of Kirka's best work that that offsets that kind of you know the the, the rhythmic energy of that neoclassical style the motoric rhythms you know the Stravinsky and punch that all of this music has to have so listen to the listen to this this is sort of the second subject of the first movement Lovely, isn't it? It really is. It's, it's it's special. There's something there, something really there. And and I want to close then by playing this version, Carlos Calmar and the Grant Park Symphony Orchestra of the finale of the Second Symphony. So you have something to compare to the Albany version you just heard. And like I said, I, I cannot choose between them. I love both performances of this symphony. I love both of these discs for the imaginative programming and the wonderful music that they capture really for the first time and that you're never going to hear anywhere else. And and so you really you really need to have them both. I really believe that. And I think particularly um, the CD disc has 
of, of all Korka is going to be an essential purchase if you enjoy the Second Symphony. So here is the CD version of the last movement of Korka's Symphony Number no. 2. So there it is. I've done all I can for this music. Either you're going to love it or you're not going to love it. But trust me, it is really good, solid, well-crafted, enjoyable, repeatable music. It will serve you well for many, many years as it has served me. So if you don't know it, I really, really strongly recommend that you give it a listen. So. Keep on listening, folks, to Robert Kirka and Lopatnikov and Virgil Thompson and Robert Helps. And, oh, gosh, there's so many composers we need to talk about. So much fine music that never gets played, but we can listen to it anyway. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you so much. I look forward to the next time when we can talk about something that's a little bit off the beaten path. Take care.